All right, all you Math 370 fans, uh, we are doing the last section in Chapter 10. Uh, so we are skipping all the way up to 10.7, looking at plane curves and parametric equations. Um, so these things are really kind of kind of cool. Um, you're going to see a lot of application uh, in, uh, in your science and engineering classes, uh, especially in physics, um, because it does something... Uh, that's really kind of kind of neat. So we're going to kind of read through this just to give you a little background um, about what these parametric equations really are. So until now, we've been representing a graph by a single equation involving two variables, usually x and y. So in this section, we'll study situations in which three variables are used to represent a curve in the plane. And it's still in the plane. We're not doing three-dimensional, so we're not using... Z. So consider the path followed by an object that is propelled into the air at an angle of 45 degrees. So if the initial velocity of the object is 48 feet per second, the object travels the parabolic path given by uh, y equals negative x squared over 72 plus x. You know, clearly. <laughs> All right, so that would be the equation that it would follow and it would go right along uh, this curve right here. However, this equation doesn't tell you the whole story. Although it tells you where the object has been, because you can plot it, it doesn't tell you when the object was at a given point x and y. So to determine this time, you can introduce a third variable t called a parameter by writing both x and y as functions of t, you obtain parametric equations, uh, one for x and a second one for y. So that's the, the variable that we're introducing is that t, uh, and now we're kind of throwing time into the mix, and we're gonna separate the, the variables out uh, so you know how x is being affected by time and you know how y is being affected by time. And this happens in physics quite a bit. You're interested in uh, movement in the x direction or things that move horizontally. Uh, and, and then you're also interested in how things move up and down or in the y direction or vertically uh, separately as, as time goes on. Uh, so you're going to see this in physics uh, quite a bit. It comes back also into like calculus three. Uh, when you start looking at vectors and, and all sorts of stuff. So from these set of equations, you can determine that at time t equals zero, the object is at the point zero, zero, because you could just plug zero in for t uh, into both equations and they both come out as zero for their answer. Uh, and similarly, you can find other points for given time values. So if you wanted at time equals one, plug in one for t into both and that would tell you uh, what point you'd sit. So for this particular motion problem, x and y are continuous functions of t, and the resulting path is called a plane curve. So this path is called a plane curve, and it's, <laughs> it's because it's a curve and it's on a plane. There you go. I know. Sometimes these math things are so creative. So when sketching a curve, represented by a pair of parametric equations, you can plot points in the xy plane. So each of the coordinates is determined from a value chosen by the or for the parameter t. And by plotting the resulting points in order of increasing values of t, so as time marches on, the curve is traced out in a specific direction. This is called the orientation of the curve and it's important for these things uh, because you need to know like well as, as time increases as time goes on which way would the object go so you can think of it as like these curves as a path that you would walk and you want to know what direction to head so you need to know the orientation all right, so that's a pretty good uh, background and good little synopsis for uh, parametric equations. In the next video, we'll graph some of these uh, and then do some applications with them as well.